All right, so well, we just talked about uh, solving, making linear equations, and we know that in a linear equation, we must know the slope and the y-intercept. Earlier this year, we also talked that the slope is the same thing to the unit rate, meaning the cost of something, or it costs $5 per one t-shirt, or it costs $20 for four t-shirts. So we have a rate or a slope, and it helps us understand how much things cost if we buy a certain amount. And we use the unit rate to find out how much it would cost for a particular amount of hours or shirts or something like that. So in this problem, we need to always find the slope or my rate. So it will say uh, something like a money amount, like $8 per hour or uh, $5 per shirt. Uh, it will usually involve money, it will involve time or some type of item. Okay. And then the second thing we need is the y-intercept, which we talked about is also the initial value. Uh, another thing it could mean is when we look at these problems, is there an extra cost? So rather than it like costing $8 per hour, is there an additional fee like you bought something extra or even to rent something you have to pay $5 up front or $10 up front? So the y-intercept or my initial value is money I have to pay before I can even start using it per hour or start even making per shirt. So those are the two things we need to find. So let's look at number one here. Oscar wants to rent a boat. Good job, Oscar. The rental shop charges an initial fee of $12. Okay, I'm going to underline that. That sounds important, initial fee of $12. And remember, I said initial earlier. Hmm. All right, the initial fee of $12 plus... $8 per hour to rent the boat. If the total cost was $120, for how many hours was the boat rented? And if he rented the boat for three hours, what would the total cost be? So in the problem, they're typically going to give you everything you need to set up an equation before you start figuring out anything else. They're going to give you all the information you need to make an equation before you have to answer the question which is asked, what, if the total cost was $120, how many hours was the boat rented? So, first thing, we know that our equation that we need, typically, is y equals mx plus b. We also know that the slope of the equation is m, so slope, again, we talked about it, is unit rate. Okay, and with that, we know the slope is the change of y over the change of x. And whenever we're dealing with unit rates and things and such of that nature, we always said that money goes on top. So we're going to associate y with money. Okay? So y or what goes on top is money. And on the bottom, it's either going to be time or item, so like uh, a, a hat or a shirt or some type of item or time. So we're going to associate money with y. We're going to associate time or some type of item with x. All right, in my, my y-intercept, which is b, we know that. So it's drawn b, so y-intercept. Another name we gave it was the initial value. Initial value. Okay? Uh, and also with these word problems, it could be something that... Uh, it could be something that we, we had to start off by paying this an additional cost, the cost of just one item. So just be looking out for those keywords. So in this word problem, I see that there's an initial fee of $12, meaning my initial fee is 12, or my y-intercept is 12. Then it says plus $8 per hour. My keyword here is per. Whenever I see the word per, that means that we're going to be multiplying or dividing something. And that usually intends to be the unit rate or my slope that goes there. So I'm just going to put 8x. Because again, it, so per hour, I don't know how many hours I'm going to rent. It could be 3, it could be 4, it could be 7. I don't know. So that's why it's a variable x. So that is the equation I'm going to start off with when I do uh, this problem. So y equals 8x plus 12. Now, let's go ahead and go to a new slide here real quick. We're going to keep that same, oh, no, come back here. So we want to work with the same information. There we go. Work with the same information, but now just work with the equation that we have. So, so in this equation, we want to know if the total cost is $120, how many hours was the boat rented? 
So remember, we talked about it. Y is going to equal money. So Y on top, and oh, money is always on top. So we associate money with Y, and in this case, the hours with X. So it tells me the total cost of $120, meaning I'm going to plug in $120 for Y. And then it says, how many hours was the boat rented? So again, I don't know how many hours. That's X. We need to figure out what X equals. So to get X by itself, we subtract 12, and we get 108 equals 8X. In order to get x by itself, we divide by 8, and you're going to get x equals 13.5. Now, remember, we just talked about it. Whenever we're dealing with real-life problems, we have to include the rate or the units. We have to say 13.5 what? And remember, if y was the money, x was the time, which in this case is hours. So if we spent $120 on our boat, that means we set 13.5 hours on the boat. That's how long we rented it for. Now, here is the next question. So we answered that first question. If the question was, how, if it costs $120, how many hours was the boat rented? We know that it was for 13.5 hours. Now there's a second question. And we're going to use our same equation, but now we're going to get a second answer. So let's go ahead and repaste our question here. So, if he rented the boat for three hours, what was the total cost? So, this time we know how much time we rented the boat, meaning time goes in for X, but we don't know how much it's going to cost. So, I'm going to plug three in for X, and the cost will be Y, meaning we're going to find out what Y is. So, Y equals 8 times 3 is 24. And 24 plus 12 equals 36. But again, 36 what? Is that hours? Is it time? Is it seconds? It's actually going to be money. So $36 is my answer. So that kind of gives us a basic look at what this is. And I'll do a few more problems about these coming up.